Yeah, yeah. Welcome in. Super Bowl preview. A little bit of a different look. We redesigned the studio a little bit, and this will be the uh, the look, the aesthetic, the beautifulness going forward. We need to plaster a bunch of shit on that wall, I think, still. But otherwise, I like the setup right now. Um, yeah, it's cozy. It's uh, a little vibey. I like how we went from kind of a more professional look with like the uh, the wooden tabletop to fuck it, it's a lounge. Yeah, you know what? It was just I, I didn't like filming in that room. Like, I didn't either. I didn't like the table. It was a valiant effort, you know, by by the squad. But like, this is just so much nicer. It is really it's like risque business back here, though. Moving around, hitting wires, hitting equipment. If wires only people everywhere. knew. If only people knew how fragile this whole set was right now. Yeah, we've got we've got plants and leaves, and th- we're gonna turn this into the the fucking jungle. All right, mark my words. By next football season. This entire room, this will be like a CO2 carbon emissions room, a greenhouse. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what that is, but... It, it sounded correct. The buzzword is fucking hitting. Yeah. Super Bowl preview, all right? So, uh, me and Mr. No Dimes are going to go through the game, obviously, which is tomorrow. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs from just the game line, storyline, betting, prize picks, mojo, all of it. Top to bottom, A to Z, one to three, and everything in betwixt. So the Philadelphia Eagles, one and a half point favorites right now. Yep. Over under of what, 50 and a half? Yeah, you know, some places you'll see a 51 and starting to creep up a little bit as we get close to that magical Sunday. People are just throwing in their over bets. It feels know? like, yeah, when when people want to, this is one of those games where there's so much public money coming in on it and like the public knows, they know offensive players. They know Mahomes, they know Hurts, they know those guys and they're just like, over it's going to be touchdown 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 little do they know i'm with them correct i'm so with <laughs> little them. do they know they're going to win a lot of fucking money tomorrow um so first things first prize picks has a an absolutely free square on the app right now 0.5 passing yards not joe burrow patrick mahomes if he throws for one passing yard or more you are a winner on the prize picks app okay so they call that a free square in the business they call that a free square in any business in any industry right now so go to prize picks Use promo code BDGE. If it is your first time depositing on the app, they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. So they're going to double whatever you put down, and you've got the free square, Patrick Mahomes. And we're going to give you a bunch of free squares later in this show that we would pair that with, that we would pair it against, you know, all the good stuff in between it. They're free squares in terms of we're going to, you know, give them out for free, but... They may not exactly. Yeah, cash the, like the half other a ones yard. are given are given out for free. Uh, probably going to lose money, but yeah. if, I mean, if you fade us, you could win money. Either way, it's Super Bowl. We're putting a lot of money on a lot of stupid things, and that's how this game is to be played. Last game of the year. No next week. Can't hold nothing. Bike. Got to unload the chamber. All right, so let's talk about the game a little bit. We've got Kansas City, who is coming into this game with uh, both teams. I'm glad that both teams are pretty much at full strength right now, right? The two weeks in between, some would say this is Andy Reid coming off of a bye week because you've got two weeks to prepare for a team, which I think is kind of an underrated storyline in this whole thing. But the Chiefs, uh, you've got Mahomes with the high ankle, played great last time he was out there. Now he's got another two weeks of rest, so I'm not concerned about that. On the flip side, Jalen Hurts is probably still less than 100% with the shoulder, but realistically, you know, Kadarius Tony's going to be out there off the off the um, off the injury report, whatever, whatever. Full strength. Yep. Two great teams. Well, one great team with a great quarter. Well, one great team, one good team with a great quarterback. Is it enough? I, I want to say yes. I. I think my my official play here is I'm, I'm going to ride with the Chiefs Woo. because looking back on this game, I don't want to be on the side of, man, I bet against Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. He feels, I know this is like a, a, a lofty worked. expert. It would have worked before. That's true. You, you know, know but against, then you would have had to bet against Brady in the Super Bowl. Exactly. So, yeah, fair. Speaking about Brady, like this just feels like kind of the next coming of Brady where it's like this guy's going to be in a lot of deep playoff runs. You're not going to want to doubt him in these big in these big games, these big situations. It's a team with like a lot of deep playoff experience too. Like yeah. Philadelphia, obviously there's a lot of good players and they have a few, a handful of players from the last Super Bowl run in which they won. But in terms of like the Kansas City Chiefs has been deep in the playoffs for every year that Mahomes has been there. And it's a lot of the same pieces on the team. So you have guys who are like, I, I think Mahomes came out the last time they played in the Super Bowl. He was rusty as shit. And you don't really see that from Mahomes. He was obviously a little bit like nervous. I don't think you're going to see that this time around from the Kansas City Chiefs. So I do think they'll probably get off to a hot start. Yeah, definitely. I think both teams really come out slinging. I mean, the the Eagles have one of the highest pass rates to, to start a game. They like to throw the ball to get up, and then, you know, they kind of establish the run once they're in the second half and winning. And I think the Chiefs, 
you know, the, the way they're going to want to beat the Eagles is by a lot of short passes in the shotgun. And, I, you know, Andy, it just feels like both these teams are coming out throwing haymakers. They're going to have to be aggressive. They're not going to have a choice. Like, if you're going right. against Philly, you're like, we got to be aggressive. We can't sell for field goals. You're going against Patrick Mahomes. You think the same way. So it's like the over is enticing. I guess it comes down to, like, whether or not you believe that a team like Philly and their defense can stop the Chiefs. I'm going to go with Philly here. I think it's kind of been my sentiment most of the playoffs is just like there are not a lot of teams that can go pound for pound, position for position with the Philadelphia Eagles because they're deep everywhere. You know what I mean? Like wide receiver, tight end, running back, quarterback, offensive line, D-line, corner. Like they've got everything there. It's like if one position group has a bad game, they've got four others that can like pick them up where it's like the only advantage the Chiefs probably have right now is Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. So if it's like if he doesn't play a near perfect game, I just don't see how the Eagles don't like chip away eventually at the Kansas City Chiefs and, and like take this one. I would I would make the argument that I agree mostly, but I don't know if Patrick Mahomes has to be perfect. I think he just has to be what Patrick Mahomes normally is because this defense of Philly is good, but they have some spots where they can be exploited. I mean, they're they're the number one defense when it comes to defending the pass of ten or more yards. But when you're you know, throwing the ball short, you're throwing it quick, and you can kind of um, avoid holding on to the ball for like more than two and a half, three seconds. They've been a very average defense, and really I think that's what Kansas City wants to do. That's how they've been playing their offense. It's like ever since they got rid of Tyreek Hill, they've made their offense a lot more condensed around the line of scrimmage, and they've stopped throwing a lot of, you know, 20-yard passes down the field. It's a lot less of like Mahomes doing – you know, magic tricks and scrambling behind in, in the pocket and whatever. So I don't know if it has to be it, it, like, like Patrick Mahomes is going to have to carry his team, but I don't think it's as heavy of a load as people might think where, you know, you look at this pass rush and you, you look at, you know, the, the, the matchup between these two lines of scrimmages. I, I think Patrick Mahomes in, in a lot of his games has done enough to beat a defense like this. Yeah, I, I guess, um, it's like both teams have to be aggressive on offense, but like aggressive doesn't necessarily mean throwing downfield all the right. time. Like maybe we don't see as many haymakers as we as we think we're going to see in this game. Maybe we just see like efficient offense. Maybe it's long drives. Maybe it's maybe it is settling for field goals. I doubt it, but I I, I could I can understand that where it's like Mahomes doesn't have to be perfect in the sense that he needs to connect on like four deep balls, but he just needs to like do the right things in between the numbers, 10-yard passes, 15-yard passes, 8-yard passes that continue to move the chains. Because they don't have a lot of playmakers outside of Travis Kelsey. But I'm really intrigued to like the Kadarius Tony storyline because he comes over halfway through. He's like made some cool explosive plays. He kind of got banged up in the uh, in the conference championship game, but he is off the injury report now. I feel like I've heard a lot of things on Twitter and different podcasts and stuff that they have a lot of packages ready for Kadarius Tony. There's been a lot of hype around Tony of recently. Has it has it gotten is it gotten too hypey? Is there is it too vibey right now? Of course it is. Of course. Really? Any anytime I'm a sucker. You, I'm a sucker. Look, I'm I'm going to be sucked into it too, but just like anytime you start seeing an, like an ample amount just unloading the clip on and Kadarius Tony hype right before the Super Bowl, like of course it's of course it's too much. People are People like myself are going to buy, and you probably are going to buy so much into it. I'm all in on Kadarius Tony. It's so annoying because we've done it almost every single week this year for the Chiefs, and then every single time he runs like six routes. Yeah. He runs like six routes. But I do think, I don't know, I, I this feels like a game where, again, being aggressive doesn't necessarily mean downfield shots, but it means like laying your best plays out on the field there. And, and like, who's better than Andy Reid at that? on the goal line, in the red zone, like... 100%. Let me get some trick plays in there. Let me get some Kadarius Tony sweeps. Let me get fucking six screen plays to Kelsey, Tony. Like, I think those guys are going to be so heavily involved. And I think that's how you beat, like, a good pass rush like Philadelphia. I think that's how you beat good, you know, cornerback play down the field. Like, if we are man-on-man -man sticking to your wide receivers, how do you beat that? It's by, like, quick passes. It's by letting your best playmakers get the ball in their hands quickly, yak, Jukish, the vibes are there. I'm not getting. I'm not getting off the Tony vibes. Uh, I like it. I do like it. Like it, it definitely wouldn't surprise me out of everything we've heard. But it also wouldn't surprise me if you know we got swindled and this was all kind of a lie and just a bunch of smoke. Yeah. Well, Mahomes, you wrote down a, a good stat here: seven one and one against the spread as an underdog in his career. The best win percentage as an underdog since the merger. That's big Brady vibes. It's like you doubt yeah. this guy. It's like. You, 
you don't want to give Mahomes a reason to have a chip on his shoulder. Absolutely not. Right? Like, he, he's the, the, keep the chip bag fucking empty because this guy's eating regardless of what's happening. You fucking empty it back and his stomach's going to be full. So that's the only thing that really scares me is I could just picture a post-game conference where Mahomes was like, yeah, I was doubted. Like, you know, they thought that the Philly was the better team or whatever, and then Kelsey's going to come in from left field and be like, what do you say to the mayor last, last game? Oh, he was like, conference. shut your mouth and no your jabroni. Role. Yeah, he yeah. pulled out the rock shit. I could see it happening again, man. 100%. It's like, you don't, yeah, you don't want to give Kelsey and Mahomes extra motivation. They just never, they never need it. That being said, I'm taking Philly 24-23. You told me, a th- uh, I don't know if you count it as like a theory, but like a, a way you decide who you think wins the Super Bowl. You told me this last year, and it's like, who do you picture more basically being depressed on the sideline watching the other team's confetti come down? It doesn't feel like it's going to be Mahomes. It doesn't feel like Mahomes is going to be watching green and white confetti come down. No. I feel like we're going to have Miles Sanders' face plastered on the (laughs) TV, just super sad. And then me, super sad to see Miles Sanders say it again. Um, Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm still taking Philly 24-23. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, Phillies, they got an elite run, run game. And, you know, the Chiefs' defense hasn't been super great. You know, as of late, their their pass defense has been a little bit uh, better. But really, you can kind of just contribute that to they've been playing a lot uh, lighter boxes. They've been focusing more on the pass. And when you have the offense of Kansas City, obviously, you can you, you can benefit in that way, being like, we're just going to focus on the pass because the other team has to now pass because we're up. All you right, know what so, I'm saying? Like, so if you're taking KC... Um how, like, how do you see this this game playing out? Like, why do they win this game? Is it because, like, Hurts doesn't play well enough? Is it because, like, wh- it, they don't get their ground game going? Like, how do you see it actually playing out? Uh, you know, a lot of it is <clears throat> that if one of these teams gets down, it's only Kansas City that I feel good is, like, still in the game. Where if the Eagles go down and you really make Jalen Hurts have to dice you up through the air, I I don't I don't want to say it can't happen. I don't, I don't think this Chiefs defense is, like, it's, like, mediocre at best. But I just, I don't know. It, it, Eagles haven't been in too many situations this year where they've had to play from behind. And in the small sample size that they have, Jalen Hurts hasn't been great. And I'm not going to, like, count them out because of that small sample size. But obviously, if, if the Eagles score two touchdowns right off the bat, are we, like, confident? Like, are we yeah. I, I think, are we not feeling like Mahomes is right in this game? No, nah, I think it makes sense. It's, it's almost like uh, what I said was their strength could almost be their weakness in a sense where it's like, the reason that they're so good on offense probably is because you can't you you don't know what's actually coming from their offense. You know what I mean? Like if it's a zero zero game, neutral game script or whatever, Miles Sanders, Kenny Gainwell, Goddard, Brown, Smith. But if they get down and you need Jalen Hurts to beat you with his arm, I think it's very doable, obviously, in his legs. I think like two things are kind of notable since the injury that Jalen Hurts had with his shoulder is like he is less aggressive on his runs, whereas like beginning of the year he was more like playing almost like a, a running back in a sense where he was finishing runs. He was way more aggressive rather than like sliding or going out of bounds. I think that was noticeably changeable over the last few weeks. And then downfield accuracy has been a little bit suspect as well. Yeah. Don't know if it's a shoulder thing. Don't know if it's just like a small sample size. It's kind of like recency bias of, you know, had a few bad passes and that sways a lot of statistics in a small sample size like that. But I think those things are noticeable. So to put all of this pressure onto him to make sure that he plays at an elite level could be uh, problematic. So if Casey does get off to a hot start, I, I do agree that it'll probably be tough for Philly to uh, to come back. They might need like a defensive score or some shit to get back in the game that way. Yeah, kind of going <laughs> off that, like what Eagles are really good at is they, they get a, a ton of pressures, but they also convert on a on a large amount of their pressures, right? Their, their defense has been amazing, but like is there a better quarterback maybe like in the history of the NFL, who's great under pressure, who's great at getting the ball out quick, who's who's good at making reads and avoiding sacks. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's weird just being like, oh, well, they have Patrick Mahomes, you know? But like, yeah. they have Patrick Mahomes, dude. Yeah, I know. It's like, what more actually needs to be said? We've been talking for 20 minutes, and that's like the baseline of what yeah. everything comes down to. <laughs> Basically. I haven't heard like a good pitch for Casey winning this other than like they got Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, but you should like deep dive into his like stats and what he can really do. And it's how do you doubt that? Yeah. How do you fade him? Well, I don't have to fade him, but I will be fading the shit out of MVS on Mojo. So Mojo released these liquid props on their app, right? We've been talking about Mojo for a while, like all season And they are the athlete stock market. So you're basically buying shares of an athlete and their price for their career. But they just released in-game player props, which are incredible because there is very little downside. It's like whatever you put on the prop, they have, you know, total yardage, touchdown totals, all that kind of stuff. Whatever you put 
on that. You can only lose as much as you put down. However, the upside is unlimited. So for instance, they have like MVS at 32 cents for a total touchdown, meaning they give them a 32% chance to score, which I think is uh, unbelievably high. Like I think so high. that's an easy short for me. And just like in the stock market, you could go long or you can go short on these types of plays. But like Travis Kelsey's receptions are are set at like $7, and I think at 18 cents. So if you bet $100 on that and he has zero receptions, you're going to lose your $100. If he ends up having 10 receptions, 14 receptions, some crazy number, you are, the upside again is unlimited. It's not like one for one. It's not like you're putting 50 down to win 50. It's not like you're putting this down to win that. It's, it's awesome because you can cash out at any time as well. They're liquid prop bets. So like Travis Kelsey's line is at seven. He has five catches in the first quarter. Your the the cash out button is going to be like double whatever you put down right away. I mean, you could ride it out, obviously, but the way that these liquid props work, I think, is really really cool. It's different than just like normal player props that are out there for some of the apps that we work with and and some of the other like betting platform for it. So MVS at thirty two cents for a rushing receiving touchdown is something that I'm going to short the shit out of. I don't think there are a lot of players that have a thirty three percent chance of scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl outside of like the starting running backs, outside of guys like Travis Kelsey, things like that. So MVS he has scored four touchdowns in the 19 total games this year, including the playoffs. Two of them have come in the last two weeks, which is obviously, I feel like, why his numbers probably pushed up a little bit. But, like, I don't envision a world where MVS is, like, the a Super Bowl hero run. Like, I'm not looking back at last playoffs and be like, MVS was, like, the key to the Kansas City Chiefs it, it's run. It's not MVS MVP season. No, absolutely fucking not. So, I'm fading. I don't think he, I don't think he scores three touchdowns in a row. Uh, with all these players being healthy now, with, like, Justin Watson, Kadarius Toney, they're not big time players, but they do start to rip into the uh, into like the snap counts of all the wide receivers on the field. So I am going away from MVS. I'm shorting the 32 cents on his total touchdowns on the Mojo Liquid props. I mean, I like it. I think it, this is a Super Bowl. You got to stick with your studs. Kansas it's actually a big game. Oh shit, dude! You're right. I got to bleep that out. Fucking put, drag them, drag them, <laughs> sue me. Get them fucking sued by the SEC. Yeah, uh, I I think this is going to be a sneaky game for some of the second and third string tight ends for Kansas City. Because Actually, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Like, so the NFL owns the rights. Like, who can say Super Bowl? Who can promote it as Super Bowl? Not us. But, like, what? what's the line? Like, are we not allowed to even say the word? Or we can't, like, promote what we're doing? As, I don't get it. Dude, and who's it, coming after it us? It feels like no one has the right to say it. Because even, like, some of the biggest networks, I feel like, are calling it the big game. I wonder, like, who comes after who? Like, the NFL, do they, you think they ever do anything about it? Probably not. It seems weird that you would have, like, such an iconic name and like like an event and then you're like hoarding it to yourself being like no one can call it this it almost feels like that's backfired because like the big game has become its own like content niche in itself like yeah. everyone uses the big game and everyone's like oh we know we're using the big game because we can't use super bowl it's almost I, like a, an l for the NF, nfl putting the l there yeah, yeah they, there's no reason for this this is unnecessary yeah fuck the super bowl yeah i mean just like uh specifically in the red zone but uh, Kansas City runs a lot of 12 and 13 personnel having multiple tight ends out there and Philly has struggled a little bit against personnel like that so I could see um, you know Noah Gray and some of the other irrelevant tight ends getting involved like some of those guys who have super long shots of scoring I might dabble in a little bit just this, because this of it. is like the game to do it bro. yeah this exactly. is the game where it's like nothing nothing matters <laughs> nothing matters no, like money's not real it's like you know, no. it's like calories on the weekend it's like exactly. what i do in this game doesn't actually count towards my life right it's not financial advice it's just good advice yeah this is when you bet on you know touchdown scores and irrelevant guys finding the end zone and octopus getting thrown onto the field which i've seen i don't know what it means but i'm a bet on it how the fuck do you get an octopus in the stadium i don't know but that seems like such a rig bet like if I if I, if it was if you gave me like f even four to one odds that an octopus makes its way to a field, like I'm hiring someone to, to sneak an octopus in and throw shit. that shit. Yeah, in. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Because like I feel like every once in a while you're browsing the props and you're like, that's so specific. It's never happened in an NFL game before. Why would you have that on the betting market now? And then that shit always happens. It does. That's it will kind of. You're not allowed to. You're, most of the time, you're not allowed to bet like bet the no or bet that it doesn't happen. You know, so you just got to rig it. You just got to know someone who knows someone who's willing to, you know, go to jail for a little bit. But. I almost feel like next year that's what we do. Like, we buy tickets to the game. We go to the game. But, like, before we do that, we get the most outrageous player props and, like, we make sure that we hit the yes on them. Like, yeah. we make sure that that shit happens. Yeah. That'll and pay for our tickets. That'll pay for our flights. And then we can And then some. we can – it could pay for our bail. It could pay for the octopus that we throw <laughs> yes. in the field. We're yes. eating fish that night, baby. Oh, yeah. We eating good. All right. I'm, uh, sur I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. Me like, too. Why, why are we the first people thinking about this? It probably does happen. That's probably why those fucking things hit. People are sitting around. 
people, the, the big game brainstorm. <laughs> yeah. Those motherfuckers. All uh, right. All right. So you, you were going with Mojo Liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I got a Mojo Liquid prop here that I, I, I think is safe. The upside is there, but mostly I think it's safe. And that's Miles Sanders to have over 68 and a half total yards. Wait, where did the tight end Kansas City come from? What do you mean? I, Cause oh, because oh, oh, basically you were talking about uh, MVS not scoring. So I was like, I oh, could okay, see, okay, I okay. could see a bunch of random ass tight ends scoring. So bars. Yeah, I don't know if I ever made that full circle point, Fiddle but six. that's why I did. bars. There we go. But uh, yeah, I like Miles Sanders in this game. So normally, the, with the Eagles' offense, they integrate Kenny Gainwell, they integrate Boston Scott a lot, but it usually comes when the Eagles build a lead of like seven or more points. When the Eagles are winning by seven or less miles sanders uh rush attempt share is at 79 percent, and then once they get up by more than seven it falls all the way down to 61 so they do want to ride miles sanders they've just had the luxury of like not having to do that all season long and he's also you know it's it's miles Sanders. he's the explosive one he's the home run hitter but if you think the chiefs are going to win why this doesn't make sense to me okay so going back to what i was making the earlier point with with the chiefs Pass defense has uh, kind of come on in the last couple of weeks. A lot of it has to do with they are not loading up the box. They are, they are dropping more into coverage. The Eagles normally want to start games passing to build the lead, but I think they're going to have to make a little bit of adjustment and run the ball. That's the side that Kansas City tends to not focus on much. And also, you know, you got Jalen Hurts shoulder injury which you know maybe you want to lean on your run game maybe he runs less because he's also kind of like the biggest competition for rushing yards in that backfield with miles sanders but you know what i, I actually think this is good what, what's his what's his line on mojo 68 and a half so total think, yards yeah okay so i think i think this is good because like with with the mojo liquid props specifically where, right where it's right, not right, right. like you have to hit it to win your money or if you're right under it you lose it it feels like Miles Sanders basically finishes at this mark exactly. almost all the time. So if he hits around that mark, you're not going to lose any money. But he goes one of two ways. He either goes for like 60 yards or 140 yards. Exactly. That's, uh, his range of outcomes is why I like this mojo prop because mm -hmm. he could break off a long one against this Kansas City uh, defense. And I think he does get a good amount of opportunities because we expect it to be a close game. And in close games, we've seen Miles Sanders be the guy. I think you need. I think the Eagles need to establish the run game in order to build the pass because I think Kansas City comes out basically defending the pass right off the bat, knowing that the Eagles try to build a lead through the pass. You know, if if I'm the Eagles, um, especially with Jalen Hurts, I want to establish the run because I think you know you're, you're kind of nervous about his shoulder, so you you need to have that respect factor in there. Be like, hey. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm a little banged up doesn't mean I'm not going to run this ball. You know, you, you want to remind the Chiefs he's that that's a part of their game. Yeah, he's going to leave his shoulder on the field. Oh, 100%. Sure. You have to. You have no We're going to have choice. body. We're going to have fucking octopuses everywhere. We're going to have shoulder blades. We're exactly. going to have fucking ankles. Yeah, it's going to be gross. Also, going along those lines, I, I, I can't remember exactly what Boston Scott was. I think his, his total yards might have only been like 10 or 15. But Kenny Gainwell's is like 35. That just kind of feels a little high for me so i almost feel like some of those yards are just gonna people be are excited because philly keeps like washing opponents and he's right on the field at the end of the game um i will parlay parlay that into prize pick squares because i do like gain well on one of them but if you guys are not on mojo yet we've, we've been talking about the liquid props uh go check out the app we will link it in the description anyone can download it uh it is only available to actually play and trade and make these bets in New Jersey. But you can go look at player career prices. You can go look at the liquid props anywhere you are. Uh, they're available on iOS. They're available on Android. So the Mojo app will be linked down below. And if you are in New Jersey and want to play, you will get $100 towards your account using promo code BDGE100. So if you deposit $25, they are going to throw an extra $100 into your account so that you can invest or that you could hit these player props that, again, are liquid. You can cash out at any time during the game for these. So go check out the Mojo app. Play it in New Jersey. Enjoy it anywhere else in the world, I think, maybe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but let's move on to prize picks because prize picks has, uh, you know, they're more straight up hit the number or don't hit the number. Parlay that shit. First one we've already given the free square. Patrick Mahomes, 0.5 passing yards. So that's mine. What are all yours? <laughs> <laughs> that's yours. No. Um, so going to, going to Kenny Gainwell, he is at 11 and a half receiving yards. Here's my thinking on this. I do think this is a chance where, like, maybe he catches one ball for six yards. Maybe he's not involved in the game plan. I do think a lot of people are going to be biting off the recent statistics that he have. He has played 81% of the third down snaps this postseason. Miles Sanders does not have a single third down touch. 
Boston Scott has one. So Gainwell legitimately has 10 times more third down touches than both of those running backs combined throughout the playoffs. He's also the only running back with a target inside the red zone. He's got more overall red zone touches, carries, and targets combined. Uh, He's gotten targeted in the slot. He's gotten targeted on multiple screen plays throughout the playoffs. So they're using him in a variety of ways that show that he's not just like a dump off back. They're like, we want to get you in the slot. We want to get you out for screen plays that we wrote up for you. So I think they are going a little bit out of the way to get Gainwell involved in the passing downs. Chiefs also like ridiculously struggle against pass catching running backs throughout the entire year. They're like bottom three in terms of receptions, loud receiving yards, all that kind of stuff. So for me, 11 and a half receiving yards in a world where the Kansas City Chiefs do get up early, like I think he can hit this no matter what the game script is. Yeah. But in a world where they get up early and they're going to have to throw the ball, that probably favors Gainwell because Miles Sanders has like six targets or four targets over the last six games or some shit like that. So clear to me that Gainwell has been the third down guy, the pass down guy in the postseason, regardless of what the score is. And I feel like we see that transition into this game. I I have no idea what he's going to do on the ground in terms of like rushing, but really like... Gainwell, 11 and a half receiving yards more. I think, I think his receiving line is pretty safe. Um, yeah, I like it. It's also I, I at one, any... one and a half receptions, which I don't know if I want to take that or... Or the yardage. Yeah. It, uh, it kind of feels like you might need two catches to break 12 anyways. I agree. Yeah, I think it statistically would be smarter because, like... I think if you just look at averages, like he's not averaging 11 and a half right. yards per reception. So it's like if he's going to hit that number, he's also going to hit one and a half receptions. So uh, I, might, I might pivot. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I think I like both. Fuck it. One and a half receptions, 11 and a half receiving yards, fucking 36 total yards. There All you go. Game. Kenny Gainwell, touchdown score anytime, two-time touchdown score. MVP, Kenny Gainwell. <laughs> All right. Kenny G, MVP. So I think my favorite square on prize picks is unfortunately a Patrick Mahomes line, which means I can't actually parlay it with the half a passing yard. But let's say you already use the half a passing yard I mean, on you you know, two different else. slips. Exactly. This is this this is this is where the slips come into play. Slip right. slips are fucking. We're falling. There's water on the ground. We're slipping everywhere. <laughs> exactly. So I really really like the Patrick Mahomes over 38 and a half passing attempts in his past two Super Bowls. He's attempted 49 and 42 passing attempts. So he's gone over this line in the in, in big games in the big games. <laughs> but also Patrick Mahomes this year is averaging. 39 passing attempts. His average in the regular season is already over this line. In prior Super Bowls, we see quarterbacks throw a lot more often. I mean, historically, like in the last 11 Super Bowls, uh, quarterbacks are either going over their season average and or just crushing this line of 38 and a half. I mean, Matthew Stafford threw it 40 times last year, only averaged 35. Joe Burrow, he only... Threw it 33 times, but his average was only 30. Jimmy G over his average. Brady, I mean, Brady has crushed this number like every single Super Bowl. He's had attempts of 62 against the Falcons, 48 against the Eagles. Nick Foles, 43 attempts in that same Super Bowl. Brady, 50 against the Seahawks. Even guys like Cam Newton, 41 attempts. Yeah, Guys it, who don't even throw the ball, all of a sudden just throw the ball in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, it makes, it makes sense, I think, because like, I forget what the, I've seen the stat multiple times, but it's always about like the uh, the starting running backs. So there's like a stat of about who like the top ten running backs each year, and like they're never the ones that are in the Super Bowl. Like it's just showing like how how much like elite running back play in regular season doesn't matter for playoffs and like Super Bowl bound teams. And most of the teams that end up in the Super Bowl are the ones with the best quarterbacks. Yeah, and it's like when you're in that game, like you got there because of the quarterback, like. The game plan is simple enough to be like, put the ball in the hands of my best player as many possible times as I can. You right. Know what I mean, and that's why like a guy like Mahomes where he'll be above average because it's like, okay, if, if you're in the regular season, maybe you're toying around with some different ideas. You want to like fuck around with a fourth down attempt or like third down attempt. Like maybe we'll get the ball in this guy's hands. But it's like, you're not taking those risks. I don't think in the Super Bowl, you're like, okay, fourth and three. What are we doing here? Are we doing like a, a, a toss to Pacheco? No. Every single time, Mahomes is getting the play call there. Exactly. So, I, yeah, I think that makes sense. And in Mahomes' last seven postseason games, he's had at least 38 pass attempts, uh, excluding the one against the Jags where he, you know, left early. And then in 2020 against the Browns where he was also hurt. But, like, in last the seven games, last seven 38? healthy games from Patrick Mahomes, he's thrown at least 38 pass attempts. So mm-hmm. I like him to throw more than 38 here. And this is just what Kansas City is going to do. Like Kansas City is not one of those teams that, you know, plays it safe by running the ball. Their safety right. net like is, is short little passes. And I think this is how they keep their defense fresh and off the field. Again, short passes. Like I, I really think Mahomes is going to crush his line of 38 and a half passing attempts. What's Pacheco's rushing line? 
rushing line. Is he in um, the sixties or is he like down by 48, 40? No, no, no. It's, it's closer to 60 than it is 40, but kind of going off that. Now that you mentioned Pacheco, Pacheco's receiving line is 16 and a half. And I think McKinnon's is 20 and a half. And I thought this was interesting because last week or not last week, but last game against the Bengals, we saw Pacheco really take over that receiving work. Yeah. And McKinnon basically was a no show but now the lines have like completely flipped. I was going to say, I think I've heard this narrative too much this week or these last two weeks where it's like, yeah, Pacheco like wasn't very involved in the passing game, did have the one game. And now it's like, oh, Pacheco's got that role for sure. It's like, ah, I don't know if I buy that based on the one game sample size. I'm in on it. <laughs> I'm in on the one game sample size. I don't know. I, I just think. Pacheco's rushing yards is at 48 and a half. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to say like, if it's in the sixties, I love uh, the less on that square because I also saw a bunch of or heard a bunch of stats about like how with Mahomes' ankle being a little bit of a problem, they've continued to run the ball out of the shotgun rather than mm-hmm. having him like drop back and have to like move to the side to the side. Right. And I think they're a lot less successful running the ball that way, or at least Pacheco is. I don't know. Uh, something about Pacheco, I, I I could see him like falling short, but forty eight and a half is not that high of a number. No, it's not. But like, okay, so if you were to take a receiving prop from a Kansas City back, are you you're still on McKinnon? You're not you're not off McKinnon quite yet. I think his was twenty and a half. And McKinnon's Pacheco's at twenty two and a half. Twenty two and a half. Pacheco's is sixteen, and I I feel like there is a decent chance they they've switched to Pacheco as like more of the receiving back. I would be I would if I'm going to take something there, I would take the less on McKinnon's twenty two and a half. You would take the less. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know if I have the balls to take the less on either of them. I just like don't know which one you to don't. take the more. You don't. I do. All right. So he had 17 against Cincy, 0-0 zero and zero against Jacksonville in their last game in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. You might have con- – <laughs> just throwing out those three games, you <laughs> might have convinced me to take the less on McKinnon. Okay. I want um, – I guess I can't go without Kadarius Toney. I, I like the first half 13-and-a-half receiving yards more because I, I do think I, – I think within the first two drives, without a doubt, we see at least one screen play to Kadarius Toney. 100%. And I'm very confident about that. Whether or not he takes after 13 and a half yards, I don't know. I think he'll probably get six, seven, eight, nine out of that. And then he needs one more one more catch in the first half. So I'm taking I'm taking the more on that one. One one prop that I really like that I've not taken at all this year, Philadelphia fourth down conversions allowed is set at 0.5. So if, K, if KC converts one fourth down, they hit this square. Their defense is good, obviously, Philadelphia. But like I said, aggressiveness. Doesn't have to be open, uh, like shots downfield, but... I think they're going to need to be aggressive in order to keep the chains moving. Like, we want Philadelphia's offense off the field. Keep Mahomes' offense on the field. They don't get to fourth down that often, obviously, because they're a very good offense. But KC, second highest fourth down conversion rate in the entire NFL, 77%. They're going for it on fourth down three out of the four times. It's hitting. I could see them going for it on fourth down one time in this game. Likely going to hit. Uh, on the flip side, Phillies is set at one. So you would need them to convert two fourth downs. They also are top four in terms of uh, conversion rate on fourth downs. They have the fourth most fourth downs per game and the second most uh, second most fourth down conversions per game. They convert 1.3 fourth downs per game. Uh, they're set at one. So if you want to take the more on that one, too, I feel more comfortable with KC just thinking that they're going to convert. Like, they're just going to leave everything on the field. Like, everything yeah. that we think is going to happen for KC with Andy Reid being crazy, I feel like is going to happen in this one. So I feel good about them converting one fourth down in this game. I think the kickers are going to be so not involved in this game. I, don't, I, I think both teams have come to agreement like, hey, no kicking. You know be you know, be fire if, like, there was, like, Harrison Bucker and who's a Jake, Jake Elliott? Elliott? Healthy scratches. <laughs> healthy scratches. <laughs> like, that just came out, like, an hour the before punters, the game. kickers, yeah. healthy scratches. <laughs> that would be sick. I'll, I'll, that would be so awesome. That's how you know you're getting into a dogfight. But Hell yeah. You have like to go those. for it on fourth downs. Yeah. yeah. You got any other Gentleman's impressive rules. I do. I really like Dallas Goddard this game. I was kind of going back and forth on his yardage, maybe his receptions. Uh, I finally landed on his fantasy points. I'm going to take the more of 10.5 fantasy points from Dallas Goddard. Full PPR on prize picks. Full PPR on prize picks. And I think a lot of the game plan for the Eagles is going to be the run the ball and a lot of short throws. Kansas City, I mean, that's that's how you want to attack them. Kansas City, third worst in DVOA against short passes over the middle. Uh, Christian Kirk, Tyler Boyd, Hunter Renfro, just to name a couple slot receivers that have recently demolished Kansas City. Dallas Goddard. He's never on the outside. He's he's always getting passes within uh, the slot and on you know next to the tackle, whatever. Dallas Goddard has gone over this receiving num or gone over his receiving number of forty seven and a half nine out of fourteen times. The reception total and the receiving total that are baked into this fantasy line, 
are numbers that Dallas Goddard has gone over the majority of the season. It's not really accounting for him scoring a touchdown. I I, I think Goddard is just like a, a nice, safe red zone threat for Jalen Hurts. It feels like he goes to him early and often to kind of establish the passing game. Feels like he just takes a lot of easy throws to Dallas Goddard to just kind of get warmed up, you know. I feel like in. tight ends always just go crazy in the Super Bowl, right? Like maybe I'm just thinking of like Brady and Gronk and Mahomes and Kelsey. But I, f- there, I feel like there's got to be a stat out there about like tight ends overperforming in the Super Bowl. Every time I think about it, I feel like that happens. Maybe. Who is Higby, 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 Higby do Higby anything? And, Higby and Hurst? I don't know. Or Uzama? It wasn't Hurst. It was, it was Uzama. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to check those stats. Maybe not last year, but like I feel like in general, tight ends happen overperforming. It's probably because those are the tight ends that have typically been in the Super Bowl the last 20 years, but I like it. Yeah. Also, going off that, K- Kansas City has given up the second most tight ends to the slot position this season. So Say that again. Kansas City? Yeah, you said, second, you said something wrong there. That it? The second w- most. Dramatically, yeah. Kansas City has given up the second most touchdowns to the slot position this year. Dallas Goddard plays out of the slot. What did I say wrong? You said they've given up the second most tight ends. <laughs> oh, tight ends. I meant um that's kind of inter- that's kind of interesting because Lajarius Sneed is like kind of really good and he's a slot cornerback, no? I don't know. Maybe I'm overrating him, but I feel like he's a pretty fucking good cornerback. I feel like that adjustment might have been made later on in the season. I'm not hundred percent sure. That's why you guys pay us. Yeah, somebody fact check <laughs> us. All right, all right, all right. I like him to score a touchdown, like him to have a good game, like Dallas Goddard over ten and a half fancy points. Also, I thought there was an interesting line here. Uh, the the combination of Dallas Goddard and Travis Kelsey to go over, I got to double check this, but 129 receiving yards. So it's basically both of their receiving lines combined into, you know, one square. I feel a little bit nervous about that. I don't know why. Really? Triple digit numbers just scare me, man. I did for two players, though. It doesn't matter. It could be five players. I'm fucking scared still. 65 yards from both. Ob- like, obviously, Travis Kelsey is going over 65. Yeah. I feel like he'll probably end with, like, 80, though. And then it's like, is Goddard... I don't know. It feels like just 50-50. I'm just like, fuck it. I don't care. No, Rather this, bet on this. Andy. Actually, this one's such a slam dunk. Andy Reid being doused in barbecue sauce. I actually wanted to bring that up. This is probably the funniest prop I've seen. Uh, Andy Reid has plus 1,600 odds to be doused in barbecue sauce if the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl. 16 it, to 1. Like, that's insane that that's the fucking... Again, when we buy tickets to the Super Bowl, we have to find a way to switch the Gatorade with barbecue sauce. That would be fucking incredible. And we found out afterwards that the players have been state or were hydrated all game because <laughs> they've, they've been, been down fucking, barbecue sauce. Uh, oh my god! I, I w- have a friend in high school that ate like mayonnaise, just like raw, straight out the packet. One of the nastier things I've seen in my life. You went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Matt Ledwan, the goat. Love that motherfucker, but the mayonnaise is something I. Uh, I hope no one out there ever has to witness. Mayonnaise in general just needs to get the fuck out of the condiment section. Well, I don't know about that. Like, you don't have to eat it straight up, but, like, it deserves to be there. I actually don't like any white-based sauces or condiments. Even the white sauce from Halal Guys? Or Halal? Never get it. Never? The white sauce, like, cream cheese. Uh, Like a ranch. Nope. Hell. What? I hate ranch. hate mayo. I don't know what it is. I think there's probably, I don't know if it's, it's it's like, milk is, and I don't dislike milk, but, like, there's a common denominator between all of them, which is probably milk or something else that. White sauce. Doesn't do it for you. white pizza. You love white pizza, though. I like white. Pi- I mean, that's, that's that's cheese. It's called white pizza because yeah. it's cheese. Okay. Yeah, it's not I, I was trying to make it. something. Work. But like, but like something there. When I go to Bleecker and they have like the buffalo chicken pizza, but they have the white sauce on it, I'm like, fuck. Like, I don't want it anymore. Damn. I like it when they don't have it. Yeah, I'm not. I hate all white sauce based things. Very Real quickly, odd. you want to talk about um, Super Bowl foods? Kind of getting me hungry, honestly. Yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah. Or you got, got another prize pick square? I don't have another prize pick square. I was just going to bring up some other props, but props. I don't really have another. Yeah, it was Reed as plus 165 odds to say the words burger or cheeseburger in a post-game interview. Um, how many players? Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that. Plus, It was plus Andy money Reed, that he's going to say it? Andy Reed plus 165 odds to say the words burger or cheeseburger in a post-game interview. Oh, my God. I feel he like said that's it last a slam time. dunk. He said it last time. Yeah, so plus 165 feels pretty good. You think? But, be- okay, so he, here's the thing, though. He has to win. The Chiefs have to win. Well, if I, if I, they lose, he is not bringing up a cheeseburger. Like he, he's going to be serious. He's going to be more serious than a heart attack. Well, that's but what maybe think, he that's goes, what makes this difficult, probably. Unless because the first one says Andy Reid has plus sixteen hundred odds to be Dallas and barbecue sauce if the Kansas City Chiefs win. The second one does not include the if they win part. It's not. A, it's not including the bet. I'm just saying if they lose, like he's not going to be in a mood to joke around about a cheeseburger. 
Unless. Unless he's like, I'm so depressed. I need a cheeseburger. <laughs> Someone get me a fucking cheeseburger. Yeah. No, um, I, I think the I think the Chiefs have to win, and then he's like, I'm going to Disney World or whatever they say, and I'm getting a double cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah. He, I, I'm pretty sure he said it in the, either said it in the conference championship game post game interview or last Super Bowl interview, and like people have been bringing it up to him. I think mm. in Super Bowl week, which is why it's like it's a thing. great bet. It's How a great many bet. players will have a passing attempt? Over two and a half is plus one fifty five. Now the value is not great, but this to me is like one of the more fun bets to make in the Super Bowl game right now. It's like obviously Mahomes obviously hurts. If anyone, if the quarterback gets hurt for any single snap, like you have another person. Actually, I don't know if they're going to pass attempt, but like likely at least a 50-50 chance that the backup quarterback comes in, throws one pass. Yeah. And then the trickery on Kansas City. Like Kelsey throwing a pass, Kadarius Tony throwing a pass, Juju throwing a pass. Like it, that, it definitely feels like it's coming from the Kansas City side. Yeah, ain't no fucking way that they're the Philadelphia Eagles are letting someone throw a pass. Maybe nah. AJ Brown. He's nah. a fuck, he's an elite athlete. I feel like he could, he's got a gun. He's probably got a cannon, but I wonder he could, what, he how could many, shoot it straight to the other team. I wonder how many pass attempts. I actually want to look that up. Yeah, I don't think any player for Philly has attempted a pass this year, but KC just feels like they might have let like three or four players fucking attempt to pass. They got so many tricks up their sleeve. Yeah. I, I don't even know if Mahomes is the QB1 in this game. Some are saying he's not. Another prop bet that I liked, I saw it was uh, the player to score the first touchdown in this game to have a jersey number of over under 11 and a half. 11 and a half was the line. And I'm personally leaning towards the under. So I think the over has two big hitters with Travis Kelsey, obviously 87, and then Dallas Goddard. I think both those guys are heavy hitters for each team. However, the under seems like it's got a lot of options out there. I mean, you got Devonta Smith. You got A.J. Brown. You even got Jalen Hurts on the ground. You don't have Miles Sanders. You don't have Miles Sanders. You don't have Miles Sanders 26. So the over has Sanders, Goddard, Kelsey. I think you also have like another kind of, ir- not. I don't want to say like irrelevant chief, but you have. Where's Pacheco? Where's Pacheco? Pacheco's under. Pacheco's only 10. So that's what I'm saying. Under. I don't know. Those are three fucking big time players on, on, the, on over. the over. Yeah. Kelsey, Goddard, and Sanders. You also have Mahomes, technically. If you, I don't think, I don't, I really don't think Mahomes is running in the first touchdown. But no, unlikely. But I mean, under you got the the big where's, two where's receivers. To, what number's Tony? Tony is over. Brother, he is he is a sneaky guy to get the first touchdown. Juju is under. He could, he could be worked in there. Uh, MBS is under. I mean, we already talked about MBS and how much he sucks. But I don't know. I I think having. I think I would take the over there. Yeah, the big the big three on the over might be better than the big three on the under. Like the big three on the under, are essentially Brown, Smith, Hurts. Yeah, I do. I do not like having the the quarterback on the opposite side of that. I feel like Hurts running one in is definitely like a very high probability to do the first. He he actually has the shortest odds to score a touchdown out of any player. Like I think he he has now I mean, surpassed Kelsey. I mean, how many rushing touchdowns does he have this year? I want to say like fourteen, like something stupid, dude. I think he I think he's run for like fifteen. Teen, if I'm counting this correctly, including playoffs, including playoffs. And I think like the way you should think about that is if let's say the Titans were in the Super Bowl, right. And they were like a good team. And like Derrick Henry had scored 15 rushing touchdowns on the year. You'd be like, he's a really good chance. He probably has the highest odds of a player to like get into the end zone. Like you're just like, Oh, workhorse back. But if Jalen Hurts is scoring at the same rate as like featured running backs, I think that makes it feel a little bit differently in your mind. It does still I feel, guess so. It, it does always feel like a quarterback running in touchdown is more like a trick play or like something you can't depend on. But if you're scoring at that high of a fucking rate, like it's very much a part of the game plan. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's a, that, that's a fun prop either way, though. The first touchdown ones are always like super fun to, to rattle off because it gets you so intense for like the first drive, the first two drives, whatever it is. Like you're really, really into the game right away. Yeah. So uh, you have any uh, other bets that you have just like at normal sports books? That you want to go over and that are aren't like you know outlandish no. props. No, nah, I've only put stuff down on uh, on prize picks on prize picks and Mojo. Yeah, I haven't put down anything on Fanduel, but I I probably will. I'll probably sprinkle on like some stupid props tomorrow before the actual games and the lines settle. Yeah, I got I got Kelsey to score the first Kansas City touchdown plus three hundred. I got him to score two touchdowns in the game plus four seventy. Uh, over at BetMGM, I that's like crazy that that's four and a half to one odds. At two to touchdowns. Sc- yeah. yeah. Like, it should be, like, I feel like plus 700 at least. It probably should. But I, I just think... I, I've been looking for Travis Kelsey MVP winner everywhere. You can't find MVP I can't anywhere. find MVP winner everywhere. I don't know if I'm stupid or, like, books no, just straight up don't be offering it. They definitely do. They offer but it, but I can't... fucking impossible. They are hiding it somewhere. They know something. They know that I'm right, and they're hiding that prop from me. Anyways, 
Travis Kelsey to have more receiving yards than A.J. Brown, minus 130. I thought that was really interesting. I ended up taking that one. Uh, I just think, you know, Travis Kelsey's way more involved in his offense than A.J. Brown. I think Eagles can find a lot of success even if A.J. Brown isn't, like, heavily involved. Meanwhile, Chiefs, they need Travis Kelsey. So I like him to have more yards than A.J. Brown. My next, I guess, like, biggest stake bet would be Kansas City to win both halves. I think they win the game. Uh, you know, you could get them at like plus 105 on the money line, but I ended up taking them uh, and, you know, parlayed with both halves for plus 420. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that felt like a lot. Yeah. I, like like we said, I think they come out firing. I think they can very easily establish a lead. And if, if they got a lead, I just I don't know how good I feel about the Eagles coming back. That's fair. Yeah, because uh, Casey's not a team that like a lot of times I think, you know, if you win the first half, it's way, more, like, yeah, it's way more likely that the other team wins the second half just because they're more so in, like, comeback mode. If you're just looking at the second half score, not right. the entire game score, it's way more likely. But Casey's not a team that, like, that happens often because teams take their foot off the off the pedal. But, like, Casey's not a team that's going to do that, you know? Right. Having but that's also, like this. Uh, I don't think that was the bet that I made. I might need to double check that that's not what I did, but I'm pretty sure it's just, like, wins the first and second half. Right. But they don't need to, like, they don't need to outscore Philly in the second half. Like, let's saying, say, like, at the end of the first half, Casey's winning. Casey's at the end winning. Of the second half, Casey's right. winning. Casey won. Oh, 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 interesting. That makes it way easier, I feel like. I feel like it, too. But then now that I'm saying out loud, plus 420, maybe I did bet on the fact that they have to, like, outscore them in both halves. That's, that is likely fuck, probably dude. what I, you did. I fucked up. Yeah. I was going to say that first one's too easy. I think the only way that that... I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, now I that, really, I'm, now like, that even like a tie game would lose that bet for you, though. Yeah, Kansas City wins both halves. I probably fucked that up. Yeah, I think it's probably just the individual scores on first. And second. I meant to parlay them at <laughs> halftime with a full game, but That's fair. Okay, it is what it is. It is what it is. This episode is what it is. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy your Super Bowl, sun, your big game Sunday. Uh, go check out Mojo. Promo code BDG100 will get you hundred dollars on the app if it's your first time depositing twenty five or more. Of course, go check out Prize Picks. If you've been rocking with us for a while, then you've probably already been on the app. But they've got a ton. They've got more props for this weekend for this game than they've had all year. So they got first half, they got second half, they got full game, they got defensive, they got full team shit. Like crazy, crazy nonsensical things going on in the app. Promo code BDG will get you a one hundred percent deposit match. Uh, let us know down in the comments what you guys are taking, what you're betting on, what the most ridiculous props that you have seen, regardless of what website, Prize Picks, Mojo, or just anything in general. We're here for it. If you could help us find where the fuck to find these MVP odds somewhere, we'd also appreciate that. I need them. They're near impossible. Impossible. I don't know what's going on at this point. If, if you do find it, bang Travis Kelsey. Plus one, plus like, it's like 13 or 16 to one odds, depending. It's really t- way too high. Yeah, I, I think the thing with that is like, if it's he, like, if, if there's, if the KC Chiefs win and it, it's just so much more likely to be Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Right. You know, if you want to compare it to last year, Cooper Cup was six to one. He ended up winning the award. Yeah, that's half fair. the price. How much? What did he end up with statistically in that game? Mm, I don't remember, but I mean, it was, was a monster. Game. It was probably a monster game. Yeah. Well, Mahomes is just too notorious. I feel like he's just too iconic. They're just like not going to not give it to him. Regardless, uh, that wraps it up. Let us know how you feel about the setup also, and if you have any suggestions for shit we should put on the wall or how we should decorate this place. But I think first episode came out well. I think the the, the setup is it's fun. It wasn't going to get any better than this. No. So it's all downhill from here. Exactly. All right. Love y'all. <laughs>